Thermal Remediation, Basic Application, and Setup Generator Systems. Arrive on site with the equipment and power to perform the bed bug heat treatment. Get the heaters inside as quickly as possible. Use your foot to help tilt the heater back and use your body to guide it down the ramp. Always use one foot on the back of the heater when tilting the heater back to move it, load it, or unload it. Move the heaters, distribution box, and heater patch cables into the treatment area as rapidly and efficiently as possible. Be careful to move heaters and equipment into setting as not to damage equipment or property. Find the best point of entry to move heat equipment into the structure. Use caution to not scratch, dent, chip, or do damage to the entryways or equipment. In some settings, it's best to use two technicians to move the equipment inside the space, minimizing the potential for damage. Using something under the heater, like an area rug or silver insulation, is a good idea when dealing with floors that can be scratched or damaged. Get the 6-4 main power cord installed from generator to main distribution box. Up to 800 feet of main power cord can be run from the generator. Run the cable to the trailer system through the main power pass to the port or connect to the generator that is being used. Make sure the main power cord is connected, twist locked properly into the main power source on generator system. Please note, when using your own generator or a rental, please make sure that you properly connect the 4 foot 460 volt cable that was provided to you with your equipment package. Feed the main power cables out windows and doors. Basically find the best point of entry for the cable. Get the main power cord into the space to connect to the four heaters and the main distribution box. Make sure when you connect the main power cables together that you completely twist the male and female ends together. Keep connections out of areas that are prone to running or standing water. Tie cables together to remove strain off of connections when going up the side of the building. Anything higher than the length of one main power cable should be joined together. Wherever the point of entry with the main power cord, make sure that the entry point is completely sealed with proper tape and or something to close the gaps from outside air. All windows should be checked to make sure they are closed and locked. Whether entry is made through a window, sliding patio door, or simply through the front door will depend on the best place to put the distribution box and the areas that are being heat treated. It is absolutely critical to always get your main power cords, heater patch cords, and all power plugged in and twist lock properly in order for the system to operate correctly. Get heaters and fans into position in key areas or where heat should be focused first. Who's being bit? Where is activity reported and or detected? Blood is the meal for bed bugs, so always start where people are spending the most time and sleeping. Utilize poly tape, magnetic vent covers, cardboard, and or silver insulation to cover vents and gaps around windows and other points of air infiltration, especially in the treated areas. Never use duct tape. Duct tape will leave residue and create damage when removed. Utilize the door sweep seals to close off gaps under doors to stop air infiltration. Remember to seal off hallway doors, bathroom doors, adjoining hotel room doors, mechanical rooms, etc. Close closet doors, drawers, bathroom doors, and isolate spaces to concentrate heat in the main areas of concern. Some areas need more heat applied than others. There is no need to heat a toilet, sink, bathtub, or shower all day long. Apply heat in target areas first before you start opening up other non-target areas. Moving the heaters into closets and other areas during the application is important when applying the heat and strategically moving equipment throughout the treatment. Opening doors and drawers during the application will happen later after the key areas have been treated. 
Set up the wireless monitoring system in a non-heated area to monitor, record, and ultimately determine where hot and cold areas are. See the wireless data logger manual for more information. Utilize the thermal gun provided to identify individual temperatures of items throughout the space. Items like metal and plastics heat quickly and other items like clothes and soft materials will take longer to absorb heat. Utilize plastic binding twine, bungee cords, or something to loosely gather curtains so they are not blowing around or getting pulled into fans or heaters during treatment. Open all horizontal blinds to prevent warping or blowing around during treatment. All vertical blinds should be opened and gathered together at the bottom to prevent blowing around or possible damage due to high volumes of air movement. Utilize the pest vacuum to physically remove live bed bugs during the application. Bed bugs are most active between the temperatures of 100 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the best chance you will have to hopefully see the level of infestation and identify target areas. Draw hot air into the vacuum while it's still running to kill all bed bugs and eggs that have been removed with the pest vacuum during initial inspection. The application of the heat is achieved with high temperature fans. It's critical to get fans running when temperature sensor on top of the heater is around 125 degrees Fahrenheit and above. Direct and apply the heat on baseboards in areas where bed bug activity was detected and or reported. The more fans you can get applying the heat, the better. Where the fans are directed, the heat will be hottest. It is very important to interact with the space during the treatment and move and redirect fans on a regular basis. Unplug all electronics prior to or during application. This protects electronics but also provides access to outlets for fans and covers that may need to be removed during application. Bed bugs seem to really attract towards outlets, especially in areas close to beds or areas where their populations are higher. If the outlet cover is loose or not tight to the wall, it would be best to remove these covers during the application to allow the heat to get into these areas of potential harborage. Computers, televisions, CDs, VCR tapes, etc. can all stay in the heated space. Electronics should be unplugged and items that seem sensitive should be picked up and placed up out of the direct heater and fan airflow. Never direct heaters or fans at items that will heat naturally. Getting these items up off the floor is the best advice. Laying pictures face down and being aware of hanging items on walls are more of a concern during the treatment once high temperature fans are turned on. The high volumes of air moving during a heat treatment can cause damage by knocking things down and is often overlooked as many are concerned about the heat rather than things blowing or falling. Be aware of your surroundings at all times. Refer to the sensitive items list and be aware of items that you may find later in the treatment. There is no exhausted list available of sensitive items, so being aware of your surroundings and moving items of concern to the refrigerator or a non-heated area is part of every heat treatment. There are many areas that are non-target areas. There is no need to empty or even open areas like food cabinets unless the applicator feels that bed bugs are present in this area. If kitchen cabinets become a target area for the application of heat, then the food products and protocols need to be developed for these areas. Unfinished basement areas are another area to avoid applying heat, as there are many challenges to open unfinished structures. Finding other solutions in these areas and determining if this area even needs treatment for bed bugs is something to determine based on feedback and experience. Focusing and directing effort in hot air under, on, and around the areas of true concern is considered the art of the application. Knowing where to direct effort is critical to the success of any application or effort when battling a bed bug infestation. It's chess, not checkers, with the bed bugs. Giving the effort to break down and direct the high temperature fans directly on the beds and working through the perimeter areas to make sure you get a good application of heat on these items and structure is the key to your success. The use of a 6 foot wide and 10 foot tall air wall is an excellent option to isolate areas and hallways. 
Air walls can be rapidly deployed, separating areas like upstairs from downstairs when compared to use of hanging plastic and other products with tape that might cause damage when removed. Creating zones and areas with 12 foot wide and 10 foot tall air walls can help separate and segment target areas from areas that do not need as much attention or heat applied. Basically, you can create chamber areas within larger homes and spaces. Air walls can be zipped together to create larger air walls wherever needed. If an electric stove or dryer is available, an additional EBB 115 volt heater with a 230 volt distribution box can be added into the application utilizing house power. Being aware of where a customer's electrical panel is located is always a good idea. How to utilize house power and the limitations involved with this is typically something to integrate with experience. For more information, please contact us at 800-836-7432. You may also visit us online at www.thermalremediation.com.